Oh, that was <laughs> spider man noises. That was too many. Was it too was many? like four too many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that turned into. Hey, everyone, welcome to our bacon bit. Uh, we're recording somewhere new, but it's mysterious. It seemed like an uh, like a annex of the bacon cave, we'll call it. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, there's no Jake today. Oh, by the way, I'm Kent. I'm Joel. Uh, no Jake. No Jake. On the show. Uh, he wasn't invited to Spider-Man Far From Home. Well, after the, the episode that aired yesterday, I'm surprised that... Yeah, I'm not surprised that he's not here. He was so uh, analyzed. You mean exposed. the fact that he had to take part? In something like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, he didn't actually see uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. And so we were going to do this bacon bit because uh, there's some stuff in here that we'll get into later on of spoilers. Very specifically, the studio uh, warned me, let me know mm-hmm. that spoilers were very important to keep secret. It's like they had to remind me. I guess. Well, and we'll, not we'll, me specifically. Yeah. But up front, I want to say this is our review for Spider-Man Far From Home. If you haven't seen it, you can actually listen to this first part still because for the first part of this episode, we will not be doing spoilers. We'll be giving our review with no spoilers. We will then let you know clearly when we are about to enter spoiler territory so you can pause it and, uh, you know, listen to the other half later or just, you know, power through if you don't care. Because there's some fun twists in this one. So let me... Sounds sarcastic. Oh, okay. That was meant to be sarcastic, but in a good way. Okay. So uh, the story of Spider-Man Far From Home is Peter Parker is... uh, Back to high school just after the events of the blip that Is happened. That a spoiler that it's after. Matt, no, okay. I mean no. Okay, because well, I I guess I see things this way. If it's in the trailer, then it's fair game. Though people like you would have avo- avoided that. Like for example, seeing everyone reference and reverence Tony Stark in the trailer. And that's the thing. Even though even though I only watched one trailer, yeah, I knew that this was this, events were taking place after. The yeah, it's of Endgame. Yeah, so Peter Parker is now back in high school with all of his friends. He's trying to woo MJ, mm-hmm. or what did they call him in the last movie? Was it Michelle or something? Or it doesn't matter. But uh, woo MJ, and he is about to go on a summer trip with his science class. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, he is called into action far from home. Oh, that's where they got the title. Yeah, I know, weird, right? <laughs> uh, I also like to call this. No, I'm I'll get in the spoiler territory. Okay. Remind me, remind me of the spoiler territory to get you my, had something my name, funny to say. My name for this movie, which gives a little bit of a spoiler. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm excited. Let's just do spoilers. No, just kidding. No, uh, so we're going to give our reviews, but this was a very interesting one because we saw this one kind of early, earlier than most movies we see. Well, they're releasing this one today on July 2nd, and we actually saw it on June 26th. But it, on a, it, so it's releasing on a Tuesday, which is weird. Yeah. But it's because the Fourth of July weekend they want to get a jump start on that. And totally. So that they're just gonna you know release it now. They want the money. But we saw it the week before on a Thursday on a Wednesday, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were it was a weird experience. Yeah, because generally you walk in. Yeah, you'll walk into screenings with me, and Kent basically walks in. Everyone kind of parts <laughs> oh, out of his way. Yeah. He gives a couple high fives and he walks in the theater. Yeah, that's it. No big whoop. And there's a line of and I didn't wash my hands after I went to the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, but no, time. you basically say, hey, press, you know, if anyone tries to stop you or, or wand you looking for a firearm, I guess, or, or a phone, phone uh, you say, oh, I'm press. And then whoever's with me kind of gets the pass as well. Yeah. Like, you, honestly, you say press and I say press. And we walk in and I'm like, man, it's a powerful word. Right. So there was a line because they take phones at probably a third of these screenings. Mm-hmm. And They'll we put them in a little paper bag and right. staple it shut and give you a ticket. We don't have to do that. And so we because they know critics play by the rules. Yeah. Uh, Because we're not going to throw away like this opportunity to record something and I don't know, go to prison, (laughs) Apparently, (laughs) this opportunity of freedom. And so but they uh, we were trying to bypass the line and they're like, no, get in line, everyone. And I was like, oh, and you said uh, even for press, like even for press. Yeah. Get over there. Anyways, that's beyond the movie, but it was there being very secretive. And the studio actually sent out a little memo saying, please let this be fresh for everyone you're reviewing this for just as the first time you saw it. Yes. Because there, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think like, yeah, I, I know, slip up sometimes with spoilers. The spoiler thing makes sense only because uh, you people don't want the movie spoiled. But what doesn't make sense is how secretive they're being in relation to the spoilers that are in the movie. Yeah, precisely. But we'll talk about that later. All right. So, Joel. Uh, so you want me to go first? Yeah. I, cause Can I give your review first? Absolutely. Here's my thoughts. On Did you write it down? I didn't. But I, this is just kind of my thoughts that I had. I think Kent didn't like this movie okay. uh, because it was comedic almost the entire time. There are jokes nonstop from the beginning of this movie, hmm. even making light of some of the events of Endgame, uh, going through the entire movie. It's nonstop humor. 
And I think that turned Kent off to it, especially with the audience around us reacting so strongly. <laughs> that made Kent's blood boil. Therefore, Kent is going to give this a C minus because of its uh, not taking itself seriously. Okay. And not trying to be the Amazing Spider Man. Okay. That's my review. Do, do you think Amazing Spider Man is the pinnacle for me, or do you think as far as like I a do. movie taking itself seriously? Well, I, I think you, I think you like Spider Man Two is the favorite. Is your favorite? It Spider-Man is absolutely movie. my favorite. Uh, but I think the Amazing Spider Man is what you wanted the franchise to be, <sighs> and it never quite reached. But there's so many potential. flaws. Like I can't totally agree with that. But I want that's who I want Spider Man to be. Same for our Spider Man show that we already did. Yeah, <laughs> three um, years ago. But okay, so that's my my take on what you're going to mm-hmm. say. Do you want to give your take on what I'm going to say? You're going to say because you liked Homecoming. I did a lot. Yeah, a lot. You're going to say you're a little disappointed with where they went uh, with Peter's future okay. as far as the superhero goes, and we'll get into this. He's basically meant to be the next head of the Avengers of sorts. But outside of that, you did laugh quite a bit, even though you tried to hide it. I tried to hide it. I know, but I kept <laughs> laughing. And so you found the comedic parts like. Uh, essential. You thought there was enough action to keep you interested. You may have felt it was a little overbloated, but you're going to give this one a solid four stars. Okay. Now should we get into our actual reviews? Yeah. So what do you think? Okay. So I feel like this was a good continuation of the story. Like it felt natural to where the world of Spider-Man would be Mm -hmm. after the events of Endgame. I do feel like it was a little too dependent on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's a lot you need to know going into this movie which you know I like movies that can stand on their own. Sure. I think for the most part it could, like they give you enough, but it definitely wouldn't have the same emotional impact. Some things don't make sense. Like you look at that and you're like, okay, that really couldn't happen in this world. But then I'm like, oh, wait, this is a comic book world in which aliens have invaded the Earth and and uh, Tony Stark has advanced technology to the point of almost ridiculousness. Yeah. This is a comic book movie. So you have to suspend a lot of disbelief. But I think that... It worked in that regard. Once I went, this is a comic book movie, I think it worked. It's much lighter in tone than uh, Avengers Endgame, and that's okay. I think that we needed a little, you know, upper yeah. uh, after uh, such a downer. I hear that. that. Regard. Uh, it is, and, and then, uh, so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'm not, unapologetically, I enjoyed it. I feel like this, I didn't like it as much as Homecoming. Oh, really? I actually wondered about that. Yeah, like Homecoming to me was exactly what I wanted a Spider-Man movie. There's some elements here maybe that I, I, I liked it. Like You are exactly right. I'm giving this four stars. Right. This is a four star out of five star movie. I enjoyed it. I think I'm going to watch it again. I may even own this one because it was fun to see some of the characters come to life on the screen. Uh, so yeah, four stars. I enjoyed it. Content wise, I'll let you know, just the parents out there. Uh, it is a little intense uh, for children maybe. Uh, young children. Mm-hmm. You're, you're in 10, 11. You're probably fine. Yeah. There are also some uh, sexual references and jokes. Yeah. That hopefully will go over the head of the kids. Well, they will because as we noticed, all of the movies we watched when we were kids Yeah, did. we didn't notice that. Yeah. So watch out for that. But otherwise, I think this is a this is a really fun Spider-Man film. I embrace this as a sequel and I'm happy to see where it's going to go from here. Yeah. Although I am concerned about some things, but we'll get to that in the spoiler girl section. So... A week or two ago, Joel said something to me that honestly changed things uh, as far as the Marvel Cinematic Universe goes. In your life? Yeah. Uh, Changed my attitude toward a lot of things where you're watching these Marvel movies with your kids and seeing them with with a new light, right? Like you've seen so many of these movies with me and like the the experience might be tainted or whatever. You're just kind of like, oh, yeah, it's another Marvel movie. But your kids are viewing these and seeing them with a new light, like an adventurous light, and they're really enjoying even movies that maybe you didn't enjoy as much. True. And so uh, I now see these movies as movies for children. Which is fine. They're comic book movies. And so I watched this one as a movie for a kid. Okay. Because that's what it's really geared towards. Everything is so simple in this movie. Well, it's very much... Um, yeah, we can't, can't get that there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but even though everything is telegraphed, but it's okay because the movie's meant to play out that way. Mm-hmm. And so it it does follow in a fine course. It is probably 20 minutes too long. You think so? I, I do. Uh, it's two hours, 10 minutes altogether. And there's so much stuff that could have been cut. I, I actually really enjoyed the third act, but I wish I enjoyed it more because there's some stuff we'll talk about in the spoilers where... Visually, this movie was going to some really amazing places. Yeah, visually it was a lot of fun. And then it turned into just another superhero movie. Okay. This one, if this 
if I saw this as like a continuation of Amazing Spider-Man and it had a slightly serious, more serious tone because there's no seriousness here. No, from the beginning. Like, and, and I say this a lot, but there are just, there's no stakes whatsoever. There's some stakes. Mm, eh, we'll get there. <laughs> Because everything felt so jokey, it felt like there's no threat. Essentially, Peter fights these elementals, and it didn't feel... Okay, in short, this doesn't feel like a Spider-Man movie. Okay. It's a superhero movie, but it's not a Spider-Man movie. I can see why you'd say that, honestly. So I if honestly... The Iron Spider suit from the, from yeah. the Homecoming kind of changed Spider-Man's... This, this version of Spider-Man, and I understand why that wouldn't yeah. be appealing to you. Uh, and, and, and honestly, having him far from home, like you can't take the New York out of Spider-Man. Like he, <laughs> he belongs as your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Right. And the fact that he is adapting to other people's, um, powers and characters. Okay. Doesn't work for me. Uh, but there's a lot going into this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's simple, but there's more than an origin story and not the homecoming was a straight up origin, but it was kind of a, there's a villain, there's his plan in this one, whatever is happening is kind of like. That's different. It felt slightly different. I last night I was probably at B minus. I'd probably go more C plus at this point. Really? Yeah. That's higher than I would have expected. I I like this movie. I, I watched you folding it's your arms during this movie, and I was like, oh, he's hating how much people are like. No, this. no, it, it wasn't the movie, honestly, because I'm like, oh, this is a fine movie. It's just another superhero movie that relies on the Marvel universe. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the people around me just drive me absolutely crazy. Okay. People have never laughed in their life. Just discovered laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah but um, i mean like it's a positive c plus okay. if anything but c plus is positive for a marvel movie i'm pretty sure if you yeah that's a higher end no marvel it's it's better you. than average in fact this is probably a top 11 marvel movie oh wow <laughs> okay yeah okay so I, I can't hate it but i was like yeah you could have given that guy kind of like when i said child's play you could have given him this movie any other title mm -hmm. and it would have been the same movie i could see that although there is a lot of structure built into it from the previous experiences of yeah spider-man but it's not spider-man anyway so are we ready for spoilers i think we're ready for spoilers are you ready i'm ready spoiler man spoiler man nice spoiling everything spoiler man can we're gonna spoil far from home if you watch it <laughs> don't be alone i don't know what I'm saying. don't be alone don't be alone when you watch this movie yeah so this is uh, of course the spoiler full section of spider-man far from home or as i called it spider-man how peter got his tingle back <laughs> So can't really talk about that in the spoiler free <laughs> no. version because it is kind of it's it's kind of a Spider-Man 2 story, kind of, where he's unable to explain have his spider sense because of emotions. And then it's when he gets his emotions back in check that he's able to get his powers back and able to fight what? effectively. That's what you found in this movie? That's what it was. The tingle. He didn't have the tingle because he was an emotional wreck from what happened in Endgame. And then when he finally gets the tingle back, he's able to spider sense his way through the battle. I just think they were going Iron Man 3 with the PTSD when Tony was feeling that after the big battle. It did feel similar to that. And then they try to like kind of echo that. But that's all I got. Because honestly, calling it a Peter Tingle, it's a Marvel joke. And it's a bad Marvel joke. I got a kick out like, of it. Like it is. It's, it's, they call the spider sense the, the Peter. And they call spider sense the Peter Tingle. Disrespectful to the character, actually. But it makes Peter sense that the mom would make. Tingle. <laughs> Mom would make the mom figure would make Aunt sort of May, who's supposed to be eighty, Peter yeah. Tingle, and then it's repeated seven times it's in the a movie. Gag. Yeah, and it made me gag. It made me laugh. I enjoyed that. Yeah, uh, and I will say this: like you, you talked about me uh, disliking the comedy. I laughed in this movie actually a few times. Uh, four out of five you jokes did? for me. Yeah, four out of five jokes didn't land, but the fifth joke landed. Okay, and so twenty percent success rate on comedy. Shamed, by the way. Go ahead. Because I don't know if you, you noticed when I broke. The first time I broke, because I was trying not to laugh the whole time. Right. But the first time I broke is when Flash got hit in the crotch. Oh. Because to me, that was just me. The and squirrel my, tap. The squirrel tap. Because to me, <laughs> that's just me and my brothers. And so I just went, boo. And I went, oh, crap. And I went, well, can't hurt it. Yeah. Might as well just keep <laughs> laughing now. But at the very beginning, like, yeah. the, it's, the movie starts with I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston, which automatically makes you go, oh, that's, that's unusual. And people start kind of laughing at it. And then they had this this cheesy montage made by students for you know the high school, yeah, talking about the 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 death of these characters that we know and love. It was hilarious to me because I'm like, wow, they're really making light of this thing that people are taking very yeah. too seriously. Honestly, the best part of that was the Getty images. Yes, when I had the watermark <laughs> that, on that it. That part got me actually. Well, because the thing is, I feel like th these movies are supposed to be emotionally evolving. Yeah, 
But I feel like people may be too involved in the emotions of it all and forget that these are just so, characters. But in the same vein, this felt like it had all the weight of Ant-Man and the Wasp for me. Because you see Ant-Man and the Wasp after Infinity War and you're like, fart noise. I would get and so this had the same effect up until the stinger, which was honestly unearned, but cool. What? Totally unearned. Okay, we'll get into that. In yeah. But it, I, I understand what you mean, because it definitely is more lighthearted, kind of undercut some of the emotion. So lighthearted. But, those, it, but I give it a little more credence than uh, Ant-Man of the Wasp, because Ant-Man of the Wasp felt like a different world. This felt like a continuation of the same world, just a lighter side of it, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, like they talk about the blip, which is people left, people turned to ash, the yeah. dusting, and then five years later, boom, they appear, and it's literally like a band members appear like appearing on a basketball court and people are running into them, which was funny. Yeah, and I was like, I'm laughing at this, even though the situation is logically horrific. <laughs> yeah, like Aunt May talks about how she tries to go back to her old home and she can't because someone else is living there and people are displaced because of the blip. But it's kind of, it's still done in a humorous way. I, I need your help, Joel. There's something I don't understand. And I don't know if it's a plot hole or if I wasn't paying attention. Okay. But there is the uh, the jock Asian kid. Flash. That, no. Oh, that kid. That yes. goes with him on the, the trip. Yeah. The, and he is five years older. Yeah. And because they show him like aging in the video. So he was left behind. Yes. Everyone else blipped. But he's still in high school. I don't know. He went on a science trip and he is presumably 22 years old. But everyone else is 17 and he's trying to hit it with MJ. Is there any way he could have been just like this child prodigy? No. That was in their grade? No. It didn't make any sense. And I actually want someone to watch this and clarify it for me because that's a good question. He was the the, uh, foil for uh, MJ and Peter. And, you know, he's one that's trying to steal MJ. And I'm like, but he's 22 and he's old. And why? Why are you putting this in here? That's a good question. It yeah, bugged me at it. the entire movie. Uh, which, by the way, so Peter's really into MJ in this movie. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he digging Liz the whole time in the last movie? Yeah. When did it switch to MJ? Uh, when he was in the blip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and, but okay. Truthfully, that kind of feels high schooly to me. Where it's like, oh, I like this girl. Mm, now I like this girl. Like, no, it's, high it's to me. just, it's a uh, poor lead in. I mean, you, cause you have MJ who is like Zendaya, 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 <laughs> probably in her most apathetic Kristen Stewart type role. And all of a sudden she's like, you know, end of the movie. I like you, Peter. I've always liked you. And I'm like, okay. Cause I like for that. example, I, there was no chemistry she, there. She puts up a facade. When the real MJ in the Sam Raimi universe, mm-hmm finds out who peter is it is a moment it's big yeah. in this one it's a joke it is and it's, and honestly this leading to spider-man being revealed to everyone it's so unnecessary because the world is full of superheroes right. who barely have alter egos yeah and all of a sudden it's like okay let's just go into it go into it the mid credit stinger is a great mid credit stinger because it's surprising yes mostly they're just like, here's a joke with a cat and a cube <laughs> oh, and or Matt, ant playing Marley. drums. This one, you see Peter and uh, dropping off MJ in the middle of Times Square. Like he takes her, he swings her through uh, New York and she's freaking out. You're like, yeah. oh, that's the stinger. That's funny. And all they needed to do, which was the best, it still would have been probably a better stinger. But <clears throat> the TV turns on in Times Square and it's J. Jonah Jameson played by J.K. J. Simmons. Simmons, who is the original J. Jonah Jameson. That Simmons voice uh, is amazing. From the original Spider-Man trilogy. He like, was, Spider-Man is a menace. Yeah, he's amazing. And so he's talking about, and honestly, just seeing him. It's like, made, a, it's like a, a running news. Uh, he's Rush Limbaugh, basically. essentially. Much like the PS4 Spider-Man game. And seeing him was great, People honestly. Cheered. And I did yeah. too. I went, oh. And then it shows Mysterio, who doctored footage right before he died and made Spider-Man look like the bad guy at the end and then said, give away his identity. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. Is they play it up in the stinger as it's showing uh, this... this uh, news organization basically painting Spider-Man as a bad guy because yeah. of footage they'd acquired from Mysterio, which he doctored to make look like Spider-Man had tried to... Or actually, it wasn't him. It was probably Peter Billingsley, uh, Ralphie, uh, who did it, uh, who edited that together. But it says, you know, he's trying to kill people. I'm like, oh, that's pretty bad. And then Mysterio goes, Spider-Man's real identity is... P-, and it cuts off. And I was like, oh, that was close. And then he says, Spider-Man's real identity is Peter Parker. And he just says it. And I, my jaw did drop. I was like, oh, it's out there. Everyone knows now. Everyone he knows and Joel, loves is in danger. Who cares? 
I did. Everyone knows he's Peter Parker. Everyone in Peter's <laughs> life. This is the Flash TV show. He's told everyone who he is. <laughs> and it honestly doesn't matter. There are no actual villains that don't know at this point. Michael Keaton knows. Everyone knows who he is. He's fighting these cosmic um, beings. It's not like the Kingpin or Green Goblin. It, there's no Green Goblin here right. that is going to track down his family and use it against him. It honestly doesn't matter in context who well, Peter Parker and Spider-Man is, other than trying to say, like at the end of Dark Knight, now we need a literal Dark Knight, someone to take the, the fall for this. It is so unearned no. that it feels like it went, it, it, like we don't know what to do, so we're going to give it false stakes no to me it, it bumped it up to the next level where i was like oh crap in a stinker game. though because yes. you have a whole movie with a too, way too long third act oh, you know I having to it. do with the, the drones where so much was happening nothing was happening at that point <laughs> actually, i actually want to get back to that we haven't talked about mysterio at all well okay so mysterio he's uh, okay everyone knows he's a villain right yeah i mean you, everyone you knows so. i mean right. I, okay maybe 70 percent of the people in that theater knew that mysterio was the villain. false 70 percent have no idea who Mysterio is. I think so. Totally. Because when I saw the it's, trailers... It's comics oriented. Who knows, Who of the MCU fans knows has, or has ever read a comic? No, but I mean, you know you know the rogues gallery. You learn like the Spider-Man villains. But he's like a D-lister or C-lister, I should he's say, of the rogues of gallery. Like he's, <laughs> yeah. the, he's the one, and, and this is, this is a spoiler. We're in the spoiler territory, but it's a spoiler. He's the one who fakes kind of being a hero to make to build himself up and really yeah. not doing anything so when i saw the trailer and i was like oh they're doing mysterio and spider-man's fighting one of the, the big elementals one of the big creatures i went mysterio probably set that up yeah like and then i get in the theater and i knew he was a bad guy right but the whole time like i kept like they were playing him as a good guy and i thought are they really trying to change canon here or is he just being deceived well he was like guy smiley like i was actually like jake gyllenhaal this is your worst performance but obviously he's an actor in right. this movie like he is meant yeah. to be putting on a performance but it seemed like he didn't really care until his big guest on bar scene, which was probably my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> really? When he starts expositing He's thinking his everybody? crew. Yeah. Like that part, I'm like, okay, he's ha- finally having some fun because he, Samuel L. Jackson, Colby Sm- Smulders, and most, most people in this movie don't really care. Or maybe it's just green screen and they can't act against it. Because <laughs> uh, Samuel L. Jackson was terrible too. But then I finally well, started... Well, have- it wasn't Samuel L. Jackson. Well, yeah, but he was still acting in the movie. Mm-hmm. But that, for me, is where it started to get fun. And then it took off to this new level where I'm like, I like this movie because when he went to the virtual reality... I hated that. I oh, okay. loved it. I oh, you, I know you hate it because it was so uh, terrifying, right? It's, it stresses me out because it preys on one of my biggest fears of like losing my not, mind and not knowing reality from fiction. Yeah. And so like when he couldn't get out of the dream, I was, I was, my palms were sweating. But uh, uh, Mom's Spaghetti? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but for me, if the third act had used more of that, mm-hmm. I would have loved it. Because, like, for example, I'm going to compare this a little bit to Into the Spider-Verse, which was very visual mm-hmm. and kind of had a weird sort of ending. But that ending where, like, the train's coming through and things are flying around would have fit really well here. Yeah. And they chickened out and they went for a big wind monster fighting a bridge. It wasn't a wind monster. It was all four elements combined. <laughs> Who gives a crap? I do. No, it was dumb because he already beat all the elementals and he's like, I need an Avenger. St-. He was already in a, the Avenger mm-hmm. because, oh, yeah, basically. Yeah. You see, if you're not listening to this unless you've seen the movie, hopefully. Okay, hopefully. But Peter gives him the ability to be an Avenger because Peter can do that. Yeah. Well, so Tony Stark, Tony Stark gives him uh, okay. an AI called Edith, uh, which means e- uh, even a death. I'm the hero. Dead, I'm the hero. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. And it controls a lot of Tony Stark's tech. And and I felt for Peter when he was like, I'm not ready to take this on. Like, I totally understood him being overwhelmed by all this. And so he then, of course, meets uh, Mysterio. Mysterio plays himself as the hero. He gives Mysterio the power to control this AI. He gives him the yeah. tech. And I totally got that because he portrayed himself as his father figure, as a good man. And Peter fell for it because Peter's a kid. Uh, he's like the dumbest character in the movie, though. Uh, this, this was Mysterio's plan, right? It was hire a team, appear to save the world, become an Avenger, profit. <laughs> like he has no actual, like the, his motivation was quite confusing. Like, I don't know if it's for the fame and glory because he was fired from his job or if it's to bring money to the people helping him. But it felt like a really flimsy thing because if he were an, actually an Avenger, he'd have to use those drones in the battles to actually fight a real threat. Like there was no actual end goal other than just being a trickster. No, I think it, I think it was the fame and the glory. And then also I think he wanted to take down the Avengers. Like if you remember, he was going to kill Nick Fury. 
and just kind of disband this this group of people that Tony Stark had formed, like prove how fallible Tony's system was. You fa- you found that? That's how I found it. I think it's fan fiction though, because it's never explained. Mm, the the Tony saying. Stark thing, uh, he obviously has a grudge against him, but that is as far as it went, and that's where I started to lose it when it was just him putting on the show and it it feeling empty. That's what I felt. I was excited by how much action there was, mm-hmm. but it was poorly edited, poorly choreographed, and it felt empty. I disagree. I, I think that the action was a lot of fun. Like I was actually, mm-hmm. I was pulled into a lot of it. The thing that stressed me out also was how careless he was being with his identity. Like at the beginning when he's like that's flinging what, out that's webs. That's why it doesn't matter who well, he okay, is. Well, okay. So here's the thing. Like he flings out webs and he's not wearing his mask. Yeah. Or like another part, he takes off his mask to talk to someone. And he has this whole scene with MJ on the bridge. Um, and then I was like, I was so stressed. I'm like, people are going to find out who he is. And then at the end when they, when JK or J. Jonah Jameson says Peter Parker, I was just like, holy crap. I guess, I guess that doesn't matter. But not in like a bad way, but just like, okay, my stresses about that are unfounded because it was just going to come out anyway. Would you be really mad if like Spider-Man who helped save the universe attacked Tower Bridge? You know, like you thought he was behind it because like he's already earned his right to be a hero and now right. he's going to be branded as a villain. Hey, people love to see a hero fall. You know that. Yeah. Look at Britney Spears. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, one more thing I wanted to yeah. bring up. I loved the choir trip romance of Ned and Betty. That's what we called them as CTRs, choir trip romances. Okay. Because every single time in high school, when a group of kids mm-hmm. would go on a, a, the choir, usually would go on a choir trip. Yeah. We'd hear about it when they come back that, oh, these two got together and They're then, they, not. then they broke up. Yeah. Like, it was just like, it's, you're there in the romance. And I totally enjoyed every aspect of that. I like them, but the, uh, their teachers were the worst parts of the movie for me. Martin Starr and JB Smoove. Yeah. I was like, stop talking, please stop. Because they, you know, in between the action scenes, they, the teachers would say something really do, like they're straight up doofus. They they're, could, they're basically Disney channel dads. Yes. They, they could have been a little more competent in my yeah. mind because I kept thinking like, why would they even take these kids on the trip? Like who would trust these people to take their kids on a trip? Yeah. Why and these two? Was there a weird subplot though with flash flash Thompson where he's like, mother didn't come pick me up. Oh, that right was at the end of the movie. No, that was weird. Cause they were trying he to make it's just a deleted scene somewhere in there. They were trying to make him a little more human because he'd been a jerk the whole movie. And I was like, no, just, just keep him being a jerk. Everyone knows yeah. he's a jerk. So um, where does it go from here? Because, uh, I mean, I, I think you will agree with this and I, you said something to this extent, but it feels so big here in this movie. Like it feels like it almost couldn't go bigger for him well, because now he's what, on the run and there was this big climactic London battle. Well, and- it's more the, the problem I feel with this franchise right now is that they have gone so far into tech. Like we've got so much advanced tech that everyone's suit is just automatic. Everyone's, you know, t- weapons are just automatic. Like mm-hmm. everything has gotten to the point where they're taking the humans out of it. And they've gone so big with this now that I'm like, they can't, it'd be hard to just go back to regular neighborhood for, uh, friendly Spider-Man for the studio. Yeah. As an audience member, I would love to see that. But I worry they're going to be like, where do we go from here? We I'll tell you where they go. Where? They can't be stopped. This is Iron Lad. I call this movie Iron Lad Far From Great. <laughs> because he literally you is... like how Peter got his tingle back? No, oh, I, I mean, I love the title. <laughs> I, hate the, it, I hate the tingle. <laughs> I, I love the title. Hate the tingle. There you go. Uh, because he with the tech of Tony Stark, you can literally do anything. And apparently Tony can send messages from the dead and pre-plan things, even though he had probably 20 minutes in between getting everyone back and finding the grand battle where he died. I mean, the whole this movie is full of plot holes. I would and say it, full of it. Full of plot you holes. You pointed out one with the uh, uh, foil. Yeah, there's the him. Foil. and But also Tony being everyone being like, Tony knew you were the successor. He didn't know he'd be able to save uh, Spider-Man at all from the blip. Right. And then he's like, and I made these glasses. And here's this AI for uh, another AI for you. Because you might not have your suit, which is Wednesday or Friday. One of those. Monday, maybe. Friday. And the whole thing was just like, we need to tie this to the Avengers. Honestly, Joel, the thing that bugs me most is the fact that this is not, it does not feel like Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man is an isolated and, yes, tragic hero. But I and, also, and there's fun, and I admit, I want fun in a Spider-Man movie. But give me a balance, please. One thing, I though, and, I'll, and you're not going to agree with this, but I'll say it, is I think they got Peter Parker right with Tom Holland because he feels I, like a kid. Totally miscast. I think, I think Tobey Maguire felt too old. I think Andrew Garfield felt too old. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, definitely, I think they nailed that right, Miles Morales. See, but I feel like Tom Holland is that vulnerable kid who's in over his head and just trying to... Tell me this, though, like, and I hate to... You know, I'm, but I'm going to. 
Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Yes. That felt right. It did. Didn't it? Everything oh, about it felt right. Absolutely, yes. This? Did it feel right to you? Yeah. Oh, man, not because, me. Because it's a different, like, okay. But it's, it's different. No, but it's a Peter Parker story. It should feel perfect. But think of this. This is Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse offers the different versions of Spider-Man in different universes. Yeah. To me, this is just one other but version of him. This the is adventure like, and the humor feel real. It feels this sincere. Like, this is like the Penny Parker version, like the tech there. What? No, but what I'm saying is... Like, <laughs> Thank you. But this this is another version of Spider-Man. This isn't the Spider-Man we've, we've known and loved and seen in already, you know, five movies before this. Yeah. This is the tech Spider-Man, kind of the advanced tech Spider-Man, which I'm okay with seeing a different story. Hashtag not my Spider-Man. It's still Spider-Man. Barely. It's, it's Iron Lad. No. He's Iron Man Jr. This movie proved he was Iron Man Jr. Well, Happy Hogan's like, I'll play your music. That was a good little little reference. Yeah. I, I'm not, I Let's go for some popular it, music but. to make people happy again. Oh, how dare we make people happy? <laughs> with, with cliches. We depress, with we depress cliches. everybody all the time with dark and gritty reboots. I'll take dark and gritty because Spider-Man is a tragic hero. Spider-Man is a light character. Who is Uncle Ben even in this series at all? Doesn't need to be. Uh, they should re- at least reference. There's no... You want to see the origin with story great, No, no. But I need to hear at least with great power comes great responsibility. Even Into the Spider-Verse did that. And that's not a Peter Parker story. That is tantamount to who Spider-Man is. In but, this movie, it's like, we made you a suit. You're caught in your underwear. <laughs> yeah. Big deal. Because Spider-Man is a light character in a light world. It's a fart noise, Joel. That's no, what this movie is. it's not. Yeah. This is actually a good Spider-Man movie. And I welcome it with open arms. It's good for kids. No. It's good for adults, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe not cynical adults who want everything dark and gritty, but Spider-Man no, is I don't, a light I don't need everything dark you and like gritty. You like dark and gritty Superman, and that's I a light do. character. Yeah. And this is a light character, too. Keep the darkness in the dark character. No, if, the if there's a character. threat to the world, I want to feel it. If a bridge is being attacked by drones for about 40 minutes, I don't feel a thing. Oh, and by the way, yeah. I want to I clarify my comment earlier. Yeah. Uh, one of uh, Mysterio's henchmen is from the original Iron Man. Yeah. A little callback there. And it's Peter Billingsley who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. I know that was such a cool callback right there. And, and I was like, like, I could not remember his name for the longest time when I was seeing him. I'm like, I know who that is. And then I had to lean over and tell you. But uh, do, do you yeah. think you're the only one who caught that? Because like that is so vague. I, I don't know because yeah. I knew it from, I don't remember how I learned it, but I learned it after watching the first Iron Man. Yeah. But anyway. We'll oh, you, you noticed him in the first Iron Man? I found out about it in the first Iron okay. Man. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, yeah, a little cameo from Ralphie there. A little fun thing to edit on. And and truthfully, look, I've been really negative, but I think it's just because it's the way Joel and I uh, counterplay. Yeah. But I had fun with it. There's comedy that worked for me. There's action that there's an, a lot of action. A lot of action. And there's a lot to Mysterio story that adds layers to this. Yes. I just feel like it's missed potential because, man, with the illusion aspect, why bother dealing with an elemental monster when you could deal with changing Spider-Man's reality and actually providing a threat? Because that would have been so much fun to see. It, I, I think it was a good mix, honestly. No, because they, they did five minutes of cool stuff. Didn't they get it at the end, too? For a second. Still, I enjoyed it. Yeah. So uh, four stars for me, C plus, C plus. from Kent. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for listening to our review of Spider-Man Far From Home, and have a great and safe 4th of July. the mic real quick though no